All right, I think we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to open with a, an opening statement from Coach Krimmel, just talking about his excitement uh, for the start of the season, and then we'll go into questions for our media members. Sounds good. Thanks, Miles, and and, and I appreciate everybody uh, being on this Zoom call. And it's nice to be able to to, to talk about basketball at this point, um, especially with um, you know where where things have have come to this point and certainly appreciate the leadership of, of Father Malachi and the people on campus and our AD James Downer as we try to navigate, you know, very, a very different time, um, especially in the world of basketball. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's been a, uh, certainly been a challenging time for us all, uh, but our, our guys, the, the players and staff have been uh, very flexible, very disciplined, very resilient, um, you know, in a time where we're, and coaching can be very cliche, right? One day at a time, control the controllables. And, but we really tried to embrace that and, and, and be in a situation where we value each day. And, and the only thing that I can say with 100% certainty right now is we are going to practice today at 415. Outside of that, you know, we're going to do our very best to be able to practice, uh, you know, on Saturday after an off day tomorrow and, and put ourselves in a position to play on Wednesday. Um, you know, but, but these kids at 18 to 22 years old, the sacrifices that they've had to make, um, not just, not just our basketball players, but student athletes and students alike, you know, and, and we have a, a professor here on campus and, and he certainly can attest to this college has been very different for these kids and in a time really where you're starting to figure out who you are is not just a basketball player, but as a person and, and to be asked to learn in a different way and, you know, compete in a different way. And, and practice in a different way and socialize in a different way. And, oh, by the way, get ready to compete on Wednesday night against a very good pit team. You know, I'll give our guys a ton of credit, you know, and, and, and I, want, I want people out there to know, not just the St. Francis students, but all students, you know, at, at colleges and universities across the campus, you know, the, the resilience and the patience and the discipline that all have showed to, you know, to, to be in a position now, especially here at St. Francis, we're even talking about basketball. But I'm excited about this team. We're very young. Uh, we came off an inter-squad scrimmage last night. And, and the good thing about it is uh, everybody's healthy. You know, knock on wood. Uh, you know, the, the, the first opportunity to compete, very different again this year for us. Normally, we'd have a scrimmage or two at this point. But you know, playing against each other is, is, is the next best option. Um, and, and I thought a lot of good things came out of um, last night. Uh, some teachable moments that, you know, if not for games, you really can't talk about. And, and we had plenty of those. And I'm just anxious to get back on the court with our guys as we continue to grow and you know, take some of the old guys that we have in the program and blend them with our new guys and, and try to put the best product out there uh, on Wednesday. All right. Uh, let's open it up. And Ryan, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, let's open it up to uh, questions uh, for Coach Colonel. Yeah, Coach. Yeah, Phil. Coach. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how are you? Know, you, you talked about the youth. I know you've got some very talented young guards that you've brought in. Uh, you know, how are they? You know, how are they stepping up? How are you incorporating them, bringing them along? And how important is it that they mature quickly if this program is going to continue what you've been doing the last few years? Very important. You know, the one thing I will say is, you know, a guy like Ramir has been phenomenal in, in, in his role. You know, as our most experienced guard coming back, you know, he's – and Bryce as well. You know, although Bryce doesn't have the experience, he battled the injury, injury bug last year. But the one thing I will say, Phil, is our young kids and our old kids have really come together nicely. And, and without the summer, that was one of my big concerns going into the year was how well would we develop that camaraderie? Because we had a core of older guys that have been through it and we're, we're now – you know, they were working to be that that primary scorer, that primary role player, you know, the guy that was going to get the shots or the guy that was going to be asked to do. And we had a bunch of young guys that were talented that were coming up. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that we didn't have that separation. And I will tell you that our, our older guys have done a great job reaching down and helping the younger guys. And our younger guys have done an unbelievable job of reaching up and trying to ask for help. So the blend has gone really well. But I'm excited about our young guards. They played really well last night. The only thing they're not going to have is experience. And uh, what a way to get that experience playing an ACC team in the first game. But, you know, they're, they're, they're kids that love to compete. They're, they're going to add value from day one on the basketball court. They've been great in practice. 
Um, you know, and in fact, we put a young group together to play our older group last year and, uh, you know, to let the cat out of the bag, I think the younger group got the, the better hand of, you know, the, the upper hand in that part, part, but you know, that, that was for one segment of the scrimmage. So they're, they're, they're doing a great job for us, Phil. And yeah, we're going to need them to grow up very fast because they're going to have to help us early. What do some of these, these young guards in particular, uh, you know, bring to the table, uh, add to the, you know, add to the mix. Can you can you specify like on a couple of these young guys that we're going to see what what they what they add to to your team? Right. I mean, the three freshmen that we brought in, Rennell Giles, Max Land, and uh, Zari Harrison. Those are the three perimeter kids that, that we're talking about that are true freshmen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Luke Ruggery is a redshirt kid, and he's he's doing a great job for us. He shot he's shooting the ball really well, and you know, I could still I still consider Bryce a young kid because you know he played some last year, but you know, through the end of the year with some of the injuries that I mentioned. But, you know, those three freshmen that I mentioned, Zari is, you know, when you talk about a point guard and making others around him better, he, I mean, he, he truly embraces that. He's a competitor. He's great on the court at bringing guys together, especially in hot moments, intense moments in practice. He's very good at getting guys back to neutral, getting guys back to being able to compete. Max comes from a program where he was on the verge of winning three straight state titles. You know, Moeller High School is... Um, you know, it has, has been as successful in the last couple of years as any program I'd say in the country and comes from a great, uh, you know, great coaching uh, experience with coach Kramer and his staff. And he, he came in as a former football player, um, you know, as a kid that has that competitive fire and, and, is, and, is, and can compete uh, at a level where he doesn't get too high or too low. And, and his competitiveness uh, off the bat is, was evident. And then Rennell, his versatility. You know, Rennell's another big guard, and, and he's got the ability to shoot it, but again, has the ability to make others around him better. And as a physical guard, as a kid that, that, that does a really good job defending. So they each, the neat thing is they each bring something a little bit different, but, but what we need, you know, a, a guy to bring people together and make others better around him. we got a guy that's more of a score, physical guy, and then a, a versatile kid. So they're going to have an opportunity uh, early to, you know, to, to get their feet wet and figure it out, you know, so that when we get to conference play, we've got, got some, uh, some game minutes under their belt. Coach, I, I got to ask, um, since you guys are technically one of the first sports to come back for St. Francis, um, without getting into specific players or coaches and whatnot, have you guys had any cases and how often are you guys testing, um, you know, players, coaches, staff, all that? Yeah, we just started with our, uh, our three times per week, you know, up until that, you know, the, the, the guidelines were once a week and now we're up to three times a week. And uh, as we prepare for prepare for games and, you know, we've had we had a situation we've had to figure out how to operate, um, you know, with with the quarantine and, and, and things like that. But our guys, again, have done a great job and, and they've, they've been phenomenal with being flexible. You know, you don't really un- truly understand the process until you go through it. And, and, and our guys were, were great with it. Again, the leadership that our, our people here on campus have provided and helped us navigate has been fantastic. There's so many questions and sometimes we don't have all the answers, but you know, to go through it and, and experience it is something that you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to, to draw back on here, um, you know, in the, in, the, uh, you know, in the next couple of months. Hopefully not, hopefully we stay healthy, but you know, it's one of those things, you know, you, you, you try to do the best you can, but even in those moments, Jack, you can't control everything. You know, in, in a normal year, this would, you know, a lot of questions would be, how do you replace two of the greatest players ever to come through the program? Now you're having to deal with like COVID and everything as a coach. Does that add more stress to you? Does it alleviate be like, oh, these people are really going to be asking about Keith and Isaiah because, you know, if we just get through the season healthy, that's a success to me. You know, it, it does. It presents, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right, Jack. I mean, because it adds another layer to you know, what a year to be young, right? I mean, it'd be nice to go through all of this with experienced guys, but at the same time, the young kids have no clue. They're clueless. So that I think that naive feeling of not really knowing, or, you know, eh, I'm not, you know, that, that might be helpful, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, being able to, you know, to, to have those kids like Isaiah and Keith, you know, fresh out of the program, we have some guys that, you know, that understand what it's going to take to be successful. So we're looking at it as a positive and having some young kids that, you know, I want to be young at some point because it means the kids are staying for four years and they're graduating. You're going to have to replace talented kids at some point. I just, you know, replacing two of the best in the history of the school certainly was, uh, you know, was a daunting task. But our staff did a great job bringing in kids that are going to provide an impact and, and provide something, uh, you know, immediately for us. And, you know, it, it's, listen, next man up. You know, that, that's, it's always been that way. You know, we know we're going to lose these kids in four years or five years in Isaiah's case. And, 
you know, hopefully those kids that were behind him. And I know that they've gotten better over the summer. That was the big thing, Jack, was we didn't have a summer. You know, we, we didn't have a summer to, to, to get through and work on that camaraderie. And, and unlike, you know, people, someone asked me the question too, Jack, what's the, what's the biggest difference right now between you and maybe the, the power five? And, and that's the old thing, like, you know, you know, is the power five going to do it because they're doing it in football and is basketball going to make it, you know, and, and they're still, I don't know. But the one thing that power five has, Jack, is they've gone through it. You know, they've had the, the football programs have gone through it. So they know what it's like to test. They know what it's like to have a game postponed. They know what it's like to have kids test positive and how to handle all of that. Schools at our level haven't had that situation because they're not playing football and they're not playing sport for large part. So, you know, we are a little bit of the, the guinea pig for, you know, for, for, for schools at our level as we try to get basketball season moving in an environment that is safe. You know, the well-being of the student athletes is, is, is at the highest of priorities. And, you know, not just from the physical standpoint, but just the mental. You know, there, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things you got to pay attention to mentally to make sure that these kids are doing okay you know, when, when they're away from us. What's the biggest like responsibility difference that you have when it comes to practice that you would have never imagined when you got into coaching or playing basketball okay. for this, for this year, you know, given yeah. what's going on. Telling kids to pull their mask up, um, you know, making sure they don't stand beside each other on the sidelines. Uh, you know, when we get together in the huddles that we don't, you know, really bring it in, you know, we kind of do a socially distance, you know, uh, Having them having them bring their own foam rollers out and placing them underneath their name tag on the bleachers, um, you know, telling them they can't hang out in the locker room after practice and in the lounge, uh, they're just you know, things. And there's something new every day, Jack. You know that, that you don't really think of, but you know you want to. I think out of all of this, Jack, I, I hope that we're teaching these kids responsible behaviors. You know, I, I want them to understand that there's there's a reason to do all this. Their their health. Their well-being, their safety is the highest of priority. So when we ask them to wear masks and when we ask them, you know, not to go out on weekends or we ask them not to do this, it's not to be restrictive, but it's to, to teach them hopefully some responsibility. And, you know, and again, I hope 10 years from now, these kids will look back and understand how to cope and how to get through a very difficult situation. You know, and, and I know that I, I don't want to, that the rest of the public's not going through. I'm speaking strictly of the 19 basketball players that are in my care. I hope they value this opportunity to, to grow and to learn how to get through a tough spot. I remember my college years, I struggled and we didn't have a pandemic. And, and, and these kids and certainly what they've, what they've gone through, I'm so proud of the way they've responded. I don't care if we, I don't care if we play a game or don't, or, you know, win a game. I mean, I've just, it's, they've, they've done so much to get to this point. And, and, and I'm, I'm excited just to get on the court and be able to coach and be around them today for, for two hours. And that's what we're promised. You guys got a lot of uh, good non-conference games, and you start with Pitt, you go to Virginia, but you also get to play Robert Morris, even though they left the NEC. How important was it to get that game on the schedule? That, that was something that when, when, when they left, I mean, I have so much respect for Andy and Rob, the Robert Morris program, and you know, certainly there's a St. Francis connection with Mike Isolino, you know, one of the all-time greats here at St. Francis, and you know, that, that's a, to me, it made sense to keep playing it. You know, and, and by no means, Jack, am I equating Robert Morris and St. Francis to Pitt and Penn State or any of those rivalries. But, you know, Pitt, Pitt's in the, in the ACC and Penn State's in the Big Ten. And that, that is still a rivalry I think a lot of people would like to see. And, you know, we're so close to each other. It makes sense. You know, it, it's so hard to schedule games, uh, to be able to have an opponent an hour and a half down the road that, you know, that, that was in our league for so long. It was a natural geographical rival. A rival and you know, some of the games that we've had in the last five, six years. I just, it made sense. And as long as I'm the coach here and as long as Andy's the coach there, I think we're going to be able to play that game. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I think, you know, our guys will get excited for it. His guys will get excited for, and, you know, at least we know we have one game scheduled each year. That's one less thing we have to do. Hey, what about the schedule in general, the whole thing about playing these back to back games? I don't, I don't know if you've really gotten to a chance to, to think about it as much, but, but how do you think that that changes the whole dynamic, just adding to everything else that's going on? It's going to be different, you know, when, and when you, but when you think about it, it's, we're not, we're not the first sport to do that. Um, you know, baseball does it when they play, you know, the NBA at times, you know, the, the, they'll have to do some back-to-backs like that, maybe not with the same opponent, but I know it's something that I think they've discussed moving forward, but you know, it's certainly not ideal, but to be able to play games and to do it in a safe manner, that's, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, we met with our trainer and our strength and conditioning coach uh, a couple of days ago just to find out, hey, what do we need to do to make sure that we're our most productive the day of? And then in the past, we'd have a day in between and then go to 
um, another game right after it. So, you know, we have to make sure that we do our part as coaches to put our guys in a position to be as fresh and as healthy as possible for 40 minutes on back-to-back -back nights. You know, so they're going to get a true taste of what it's going to be like to be a, a pro as, as, as pros play back-to-back -back nights many, many, uh, many a nights. But to play the same opponent will be unique, but we're all in it. I mean, we're all in the same situation. So uh, we just got to make the best of it and find a way what works best for us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge, but and it's because it's going to be new. And I think so many times people are resistant to change. Like, the, oh, it's, 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 we didn't, we've never done it before. But you know what? It, 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 we're going to embrace it. We're going we're to find a way to be the, the best we can whenever we're, we're given the opportunity to play. And, you know, it, and who knows? Maybe we'll fall in love with it. And it'll be the new norm. And getting, getting back to on the court stuff a little bit. Uh, you know, for almost forever, St. Francis has been kind of, the, the program has always been looked at as, as the guards that came through. You know, it's, it's been a guard driven, driven program and, and basketball seems to be going that way in general, but you've got such a good foundation on the inside this year. And you've added some, some elements to that as well. But I mean, you have, you have miles, you have Mark to start with, you've got, uh, you've got Ty and then you've got, uh, I think your first seven footer coming in now, and you've got a transfer coming in from Holy Cross. Uh, tell me a little bit about what, you know, just, is that going to be the foundation of the team starting off and how do you work things kind of from the inside out? Yeah. I mean, that's a great point, Phil. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Earl Brown and Ronnie Drennan, those two guys were post players for us yeah. and they, they garnered all conference. Uh, so for a while we were more of a post dominant and we've just shifted in the last mm -hmm. couple of years because of Jamal Keith and Isaiah and Andre in there too. Um, uh, you know, and Malik and some of those guys that have garnered some, uh, some awards, but yeah, our most experienced guys coming back are miles and Mark. You know, Miles and Mark have the most minutes under their belt and have the most game experience. And, you know, th that's something that, you know, is, is as a staff, we've talked about and, and finding ways to play through those guys. And, and you know, Ty is an experienced guy. Um, and then we did bring in some new kids. Uh, Jariah and Josh are, are, are two kids that um, have done very well in the preseason for us and are going to provide some depth at the, at the five for us. But having Mark and Miles and Ty, you know, three guys that have got a bunch of college games under their belt is certainly something that we have to um, th that we have to take advantage of early. And, and it's and the tough thing, you'll feel is when we look at our schedule, you're asking those guys as experienced guys, but you're trying to get the young guys in it against a pretty daunting schedule. But you know what? They, that what a better way to learn? You know, going in and playing an ACC opponent or two ACC opponents, Atlantic Ten and you know, it, it get them ready for Northeast Conference play. But yeah, the strength of it is, you know, to play inside out. And that's something we've tried to preach. It's, it's the best way to play. We played more inside out with the drive in the past. Now it's, hey, we got to get that ball on the block. And it doesn't mean that Miles or Mark have to shoot it all the time. But, you know, an inside out three, we had one yesterday where Mark put it on the block. We put on the ball, to, uh, the block to Mark, kicked it out to Ramir. Ramir stepped into a shot. It's the easiest shot in basketball where you're stepping in, your shoulders are square. So, you know, it, it's something that early on we're going to rely on and throughout the year because those guys have proven to be productive in their time here at St. Francis. As we get guys more and more experienced, especially at the perimeter, um, but having Bryce and Ramir back, guys that have played significant minutes and have had some big games for us, you know, th that's going to be important. But the strength and the depth of our team right now is at the four and the five. Hey, Rob, it's Ryan Peters. Hey, Ryan. So given what you've seen in practice this fall, um, what, is, what is your defense going to look like? Or will you prioritize turnover generation? Or, um, you know, obviously you have a lot of length at multiple positions. Will you instead just instruct your guys to stay in front and kind of focus really on uh, field goal defense? Talk about that uh, kind of that dynamic with how your defense changes. Now you're going to have more front court heavy situation. Yeah, I think we're going to be more versatile. Uh, Ryan, you know, we have, we have some pieces. I think that when you talk about length and versatility and athleticism, um, you know, though, those are things that I, that I think on paper make us a better defensive team. And we've got a lot of room to grow in that area. But the one thing is that we do have, um, you know, so, some more size and athleticism at positions we, and in depth at positions we haven't always had, um, you know, so I, I'd like to generate some turnovers. And, and more so in the half court, you know, we never really have been a pressing team and we'll pick our spots, but to generate turnovers, whether it be in man or zone, um, so that we can get out and play in transition. But one of the things that, you know, early on, we're really going to, to, to harp on is that ability to rebound and, and keep teams to one shot. Because when you can play and when you can play and get out in transition, 
you know, that's where I think things, you know, especially early on, we can get some easier looks. We don't have to rely so much on offensive execution, but we can get some stops and, and, and limit teams to one shot, you know, and get those rebounds. But with our length and athleticism, I'm hoping that we can convert, you know, some of the turnovers and then keeping teams to one shot into some easy baskets. But, um, you know, it, it's been so far, we've, we've been pretty good defensively. In fact, the first 10 minutes, I don't know if it was good defense or really bad offense or probably a combination of both last night, but, you know, we did some really good things defensively. Um, and, and we're starting to understand some of the rotations. And, you know, so many people think about, you know, the youth of, you know, from an offensive uh, standpoint, but from a defensive standpoint, sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult because defense can be great. You know, rotations are not always the same or, you know, how you play one guy is different from how you play another guy. And um, offense can be a little bit more black and white, if you will. But defense can be a little bit of gray area at times. But all I do know is, Coach Taylor's not going to be happy if we don't win the 50-50 ball, if we're not grimy, if we don't keep guys, uh, you know, to one shot. Those are all things that, you know, I know he's going to be uh, out there, you know, barking at our guys and making sure that they play hard, that they play aggressive, and that they're physical. Hey, Rob, since we're bigger and uh, deeper in the front court uh, than in years past, you know, and, uh, and you know, when we've been more guard heavy, uh, the rotation in the non-conference schedule has been different uh, because you got to go bigger against power five schools. Uh, do you, uh, you know, and I know there's still a lot of feeling out right now, but uh, do you feel like the people we see on the court uh, against some of the uh, bigger non-conference opponents uh, might be more consistent uh, when we're playing uh, people in our peer group or in the league? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, and so much of that has to be worked out in the non-conference, Pat, as you mentioned, you know, but that's when we figure out our rotation. That's when we figure out who plays well together, um, you know, who's good against the zone, who's good against the press, um, you know, who, who, who plays well, um, you know, against the more physical team, where can we get the mismatches? But, you know, I think with, you know, with our size and with, the, you know, with our, our skill set in there, we're going to have to find ways to, to play a little bit differently. You know, and I think so much of coaching is, you know, taking the, the, the talent that you have and finding ways to put them in a position to be successful, whether it's against, uh, you know, Pitt or Mount St. Mary's. And, and, and that's, um, that's going to be a little bit different this year with having those league games so early that you know, we have to figure things out a lot quicker than we have in the past so that we can be in a position to, to, to be at our best against the Mount St. Mary's or then after you a couple of days later. So, you know, I, I think that that's the direction we're going, but we'll use these first couple games to work some of the cobwebs out and get, you know, get that, you know, that those game jitters maybe, but, you know, to really hone in on a rotation and, and, and different again from this year is, we played a bunch of different combinations in practice. And at this point, most times by practice 27 or 28, we know who's going to start. You know, we know who's going to our rotation. And not that that can't change, but we've tried so many different combinations this year because of what is in front of us, you know, not knowing who's going to be with us and, you know, how this whole, you know, the, the health of it's going to play out and trying to do things that from a, from a scheme standpoint, we can put people in different spots and not to change how we play, but also combinations that are comfortable with each other instead of, you know, relying on the same people each and every night. All right, we got time for one or two more. Everybody good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, Coach Trimble, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you guys spending some time and allowing me to talk. And I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving and you, know, you, you stay healthy and, you know, we can, you know, hopefully see you in person at some point as we're, as we're playing a game here in DeGaulle Arena and Ryan at some point when we come up that way, hopefully we'll get a chance to connect. But uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and uh, you know, appreciate you guys being on. Take Miles, care, Rob. Miles Thanks, and Bryce, Rob. do your part now. All right, thank you, Coach Kramer. We're going to be joined by uh, Miles Thompson and Bryce Lasky. We're going to unmute them and welcome them to our preseason availability zone. Once Miles is unmuted, we will get started. There we go. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you guys are good. All right. Um, we'll just open it up to questions from the start for our students. Hey, Miles, how, uh, how is how exciting it is to be able to get out there and play? And what's the offseason been like for you with everything going on away from basketball? Um, away from basketball? Um, I can't really complain. I got closer to friends and stuff like that. I was close with my mom and everybody. So the off season with this whole thing has going on, I got real close with a lot of people. But um, the off season actually been good to me. 
because when, when, when I'm home and stuff like that, I have a gym and everything, so I was good like the whole time. But is it, is it did you did you ever at any point have doubts that you were going to have a season? Did did that ever cross your mind? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, that, that was like a crazy thing. Like home, like back home, like all my parents stuff. Like, are y'all sure? Like, are you y'all going to play? So in my mind, I'm like, I hope we do. Like, I hope we do. I never like said like no or nothing like that though. Miles, how would you describe your your comfort level in year three versus when you came to St. Francis when you were just 18 and how that has all changed, like, you know, coming into your third year? Um, my freshman year, the comfort level was, like, not as good as it was now. Like, my freshman year, I was kind of, like, I I iffy out there. But now, in, I'm in year – I'm in this year now. I'm feeling good, more uh, comfortable in my shots, and uh, I just feel fine now. Like, it's not as much as I did when I – I came in as a freshman. How would you describe what practice is like right now? I mean, this is, you probably have never practiced like this with basketball ever. Like, you know, what is what is the most bizarre thing that you guys have to do that you just like, I've never had to do this before? Sprints with this mask on. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do. Like, you got to play games with your mask on and stuff like that. Like, you can't even breathe half the time. Like, it's very hard. Like, the mask thing is, like, a totally hard part. Bryce, kind of a, a similar aspect, you know, you know, the difficulty not only of running with a mask and whatnot, but also, you know, having to replace or having to replace guys like Isaiah and Keith, like what is the most difficult part about, you know, being someone who has to replace them, but also, you know, in, in a year where, you know, COVID is such a, a dominant force in you know, not only basketball, but our country, how it kind of, you know, takes a little bit of the pressure off. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of pressure there trying to replace guys like that. But, I mean, through talking with Miles and some of my teammates and definitely my coaches, I've come to understand that I I won't replace them. It's just I play a different type of basketball than a lot of those guys do, for better and for worse. And just definitely the situation with this has taken some of the pressure off simply because it's kind of hard to worry about that whenever we're worrying about if – I'm going to have COVID or if a family member is going to have COVID or something like that. But uh, it's definitely taking the pressure off, but it's also added a lot of pressure with just the new factors that are going to every day. Bryce, talk a little bit about, you know, how things have changed in terms of like the chemistry, the leadership, the foundation of this team. Uh, you've, you're part of a very young guard core and of course, it's, you know, so much of, of basketball is even when you're, you're strong inside, it's got to take people to get them the ball, to, to, to open things up. How's, how's it been like for you from a standpoint of leadership? How do you see these younger guys being integrated into the program and hopefully being able to keep, uh, you know, to keep things going the way they've been going the last few years? Uh, yeah, leadership wise, it's, it's definitely been a change just because my first two years here, we had guys like, Jamal, Keith, and Isaiah, and even like Scott Meredith and Andre Wolford, who anytime there was issues, you could just look up to those guys. And now like definitely having Ramir, Mark, and Miles helps a lot. But a guy like myself last year, I, did, I didn't play a lot. So coming in this year, I do have more of a leadership role. So it's, it's taking some time getting used to that, but I'm starting to feel comfortable with it. And I mean, all of our young guys have really surprised me with how productive they've been from day one, just how comfortable they are within our program and uh I really am not not looking to for any of them to really struggle a lot early on as you would expect a freshman to just because they've all played high level basketball even before they got here so coming to St. Francis it you could tell these guys just felt felt at home immediately do you think uh, I, I see that in the in the preseason Paul I believe you were picked sixth and considering what this program has done and how it's overcome graduation losses the last few years does that stick with you a little bit I mean does that give you some some extra motivation do you look at that at all um yeah I saw and we I've talked about it with some of the guys on our team and I wasn't surprised to see us pick there just because like you said we are a very young team but I mean it definitely puts more of a chip on our shoulder just because we know that we are one of the best programs in this conference and I, I don't think that's changed from last year to this year Miles uh, you know, how, how, how does things, how are things different this year with, you know, having such a group of, 
experienced inside players, uh, you know, kind of leading the team, uh, you know, that being the, the point where you start, where you're probably the strongest. Um, this year, like to lead last year, we had Keith and everybody, Jamal. Well, not last year, Keith, Zay, Scotty and all them. But um, I learned from those guys in the, in like the past years to lead and stuff like that. And then um, we have a flag and Flag knows the game very, very well, so he sh he should be fine down there. Is it is it harder? I don't, I don't I get I guess there's different ways of going about it, but you know, like I was saying to Bryce, you have the guards and and you know when you have a a big experience a crew of uh, of frontliners who are who are experienced, the most experienced part of the team. But your guards, the young guards, still have to get you the ball, get you involved. Yeah. How how do you how do you guys have to approach things to to I guess take more of an initiative to to you know to take advantage of that experience that you have uh, on the front court? Uh, the front court, we just talk to the guards a lot and stuff like that. And most of our offense, we want to get the uh, we want to have the ball in the post a lot. So that's just something that. Coach Cream and Coach T and then tell our guards half the time. So we don't really have to talk about it. It's like just a, this is actually a thing that we have to do, do, do in practice, stuff like that. Hey, Bryce, Miles uh, mentioned that he lived close to a gym out in Jersey, uh, made it easy for him to work out. Uh, what were your circumstances like back home over the summer in terms of uh, being able to stay conditioned and, and stay sharp? Um, early on in the quarantine, like a lot of people, I didn't really have any any options. And then as things started to progress a little bit, I live really close to Morgantown, West Virginia. And West Virginia was approaching COVID a little bit differently than Pennsylvania was. So I had a, a lifting area down there and a basketball gym that like I was going to. So I didn't miss as much as I really expected to. But there was also like I wasn't able to play pickup or really be in workouts with anyone else just because of the situation. But I mean, all things considered, I was really happy with the amount of work I was able to get in. Bryce, describe your game a little bit, because, you know, we only saw a snippet of it your freshman year due to your health um, and, you know, injuries and whatnot. But obviously you shot it well from three, but you also were a little productive from inside the arc. You know, we'll, we'll, give, give me kind of a... Uh, a kind of a snapshot of what your game is and how you intend to showcase that as a sophomore? Um, I don't, I would say first and foremost, just more so of a score, just because I, I am comfortable from scoring from like all three levels, but I'm also the type of guy that I don't, if, if we're winning games, I don't, I don't care if I have four points or if I have 15, it's just, I'm the, I'm, I'm willing to make the extra pass. And I know that, if I start making the extra pass, then it's more likely my teammates will. And that just, I mean, you just end up playing fun basketball at that point. So, I mean, I, I would say that's really the type of player I am. I mean, the team loses a lot of three points scoring. So obviously you're going to be one of the guys that coach is going to lean on as far as filling up from behind the arc, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But we have a uh, uh, Luke Ruggery who registered last year and then with uh Rennell coming in as well. Those, they're very good three-point shooters. And, I mean, Miles has improved his three-point shot every year he's been at St. Francis. So, I mean, we're losing a lot too. But, I mean, obviously we're, I'm seeing every day at practice. But I think we're going to be able to replace a lot of that. All right. Do we have anything else for Miles and Bryce? Yeah, one more. Uh, uh, this is Rader Bryce or Miles. Uh, you know, Coach mentioned about Luke Ruggery and about how he's been shooting and whatnot. But I got to ask, is he a better shooter or is he better on TikTok? I, might be, I don't know. He's good at both. Yeah, he I'm a, I'm he a, been, I'm a, he been I'm right out at practice. I see just as much of the TikTok as I do the shooting, but uh, I, I probably got to go with shooting because he'll get mad at me if I say TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, so Bryce is going to pick up some of the three-point shooting. We lost Isaiah and his uh, spectacular uh, transition dunks. Who's going to deliver the first jaw-dropping uh, hammer? Um, I'm going to have to go with Ramir. He's okay. been doing a lot of dunks uh, lately in practice. 
he gets off the floor a lot. So I'm going to be guessing Ramir. That's going to be it. That's my guess. Yeah, or my me. Guess. I wouldn't say. I'm not, I'm not I might have one here and there. I'm not picking Miles, but uh, <laughs> I would probably say Max Land, the freshman from Cincinnati. He, one of the most athletic players I've ever played with. So I think he's going to have some, some highlights for you guys. All right. Does anybody have anything else for these guys? All right, Bryce, Miles, thank you. Yep, thank you, you guys. Guys are good to go. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, fellas.